Can you see my face? Okay. <laughs> um, so you're not going to be able to see my face for the most of this tutorial, but I'm going to be doing a lot right here. So um, I know a lot of y'all don't weren't you know weren't able to get supplies quite so quickly, um, but I I'm going to show you this anyway, and hoping you have some supplies um, from home, or hoping that you have. Um, an opportunity at some point during this quarantine to safely purchase supplies, whether you're uh, doing a call and pickup or whether you're ordering online and getting it delivered. But I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of what is watercolor. And I've been wanting to do this tutorial for a long time. Um, and it just, you know, it came at a really good time during the quarantine. So we're going to go over basic supplies first. And you can see that I have a little, a little corn scene, my little vignette here. And thank you all so much for joining in and um, doing this hashtag Haley from home activity, all these activities with me um, and with one another. It's really fun to build community. So I am showing you first and foremost cold press paper. And I've already ripped off a piece of paper, but this paper, and I know you're not going to be able to see this, but it's it's a really thick paper. It's 140 pound, 140 pound. This is Arches. And this was actually my grandfather's pad. So um, it has a lot of history in it, and I don't use it very often because I want to save as much of it as I can, but I do want to share his, his energy with you all tonight because he taught me how to watercolor. So this is my grandfather's pad. I also have hot press paper tonight, so it's super smooth, and also 140 pound, but we're going to be painting on cold press tonight. So I don't know... Um, Hopefully you have some type of watercolor paper. You probably have a cold press or even if you have a multimedia craft paper, that would work. Let's talk about brushes. So this is um, some of my favorite brushes that I have. Actually, I have two of my brushes from my late grandfather that passed. So Pappy, I feel you in these brushes. And then this one was my other grandfather. So we have a lot of good energy with us tonight. Um, the first brush is a size 30. So I love big brushes to just pour water onto paper. And again, I know that this watercolor might be really new for y'all. So even if you're just sitting back and watching and enjoying some of the patterns I'm going to create, um, but it's okay if you're super new. And it's also fun if you're not super new, just to kind of, you know, maybe see how a beginner would try. So this is a th size 30. It's a Simply Simmons and it's a round brush. Um, Anytime you're looking for a watercolor brush, you want a soft bristle. It can be synthetic, but this one's a natural fiber. I'm actually not going to use this one tonight because um, I have something else in mind. These two are my also uh, round brushes. They're size 12. You can see this one's got a lot more love in it. This was Pappy's, so it wasn't used quite as much, but I'm hoping that it looks like this in a while, really using it a lot. We're going to probably stick with these size brushes tonight. Most of y'all at home might have in between a size 12 or a 10. These are my size 10 brushes. This one melted. Somehow, I think I like left it in my car accidentally and it melted, so I have Pappy's new one, the size 10. Um, I helped him pick them out, so they're brushes that I, I like. And then I have a really nice line brush um, from, again, Simply Simmons, and it's a size 2. So this is what I use to get those fine lines. Um, I put on my website, if you look under HaleyBowen.com on my events page, I have recommendations of some of my favorite supplies and how to order them locally if you're in Houston or if you're international, uh, Cashel, if you want some supplies. <laughs> so let's talk about, we've talked about our paper and we're sticking with cold press tonight. And what I like about cold press is because it's textured and imagine hot press like an iron, it's super smooth. This is hot press. Cold press has that texture. What I like about cold press is that it takes a little bit longer for the water to fully dry. So it gives you a little bit more of an opportunity to correct a mistake or to, to let one area dry and really let the, and keep adding in and pouring in more colors. With hot press, you have to be a little faster and I don't want to put that pressure on y'all tonight. So let's talk about colors. I've pulled up a color wheel here tonight. Um, and you can see that okay, Michael? So I wanted to show you a color wheel because the thing with a color wheel that I like is it talks about primary colors. So these are the natural colors, yellow, yellow, red, blue, 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 red, yellow, um, that you can't create without, uh, but these are colors that come on their own. Secondary colors are colors that yellow and blue make, so green, orange, and purple. 
Red and blue make purple. Red and yellow make orange. Jean-Pierre is trying to come up on the table. So um, if you have a color wheel at home, this is a great reference tool. If not, I suggest printing one and just having it nearby. But um, these are our colors, so primary and secondary. If you try to mix the colors that are opposite from one another, that's when you get brown. So if you've ever tried to paint and you're like, oh my gosh, I keep getting brown, you're most likely mixing colors that are across the color wheel from one another. These are called complementary colors. So try not to mix those colors unless you're actively looking for brown, otherwise you're gonna get brown. So that's our color wheel. It's just from Google um, and it's just gonna help you kind of know what colors to stay away from. This one's a little more advanced. Um, I'm not gonna go into this tonight, but if you want a more advanced one, there's certainly a lot of those great options showing more of the full range of the color wheel. But I do wanna go ahead and get started painting because I know you're interested in that. So if you have your compact set, y'all are lucky. I cleaned half of it tonight, so you're half lucky. Um, I did not clean this part, so excuse my color palette. But remember, I talk so fondly about the Winsor Newton compact set um, because it's, first of all, it's super cute. I'm obsessed with these little colors that can come out and you can use them and refill them. But second of all, it's so not intimidating. Um, if I've shown y'all my full on color palette, again, I've cleaned it for you, so you're lucky. Well, I did clean half of it. This can be really intimidating for a lot of people. Um, and I want to thank my first mentor when I moved to Houston, Jan McNeil. She gave me this color palette and it's had so much love and that's the thing with watercolor supplies. I love sharing, and I know we're not in a, in a space to really share right now, but I'm hoping after this, you know, we can have more painting parties together. So let's talk about a great color that I use very often, navy. And I want us to start with our first color. So what I'm gonna have you do is keep your paper wet, for the dry, excuse me, for this first activity. So we are not going to add, you've probably seen watercolors before where people add water and then they add the pigment. We're going to keep the paper dry and then we're going to add pigment to paper. So we're going wet to dry and then I'm going to show you what wet to wet looks like. So we're going to start really simple. Let's talk about how to actually paint. So how you collect paint on your brush, you have to get the brush wet first. You have to get the brush wet first, and it's called sopping up or picking up, picking up the pigment. So depending on the pigment that you want, let's say I would like to make a navy. I'm gonna get my brush wet, always have a paper towel nearby and a jug of water, dab it off a little bit, and then choose your color. So I'm gonna go for a dark blue, and I'm just getting all up in there, really grabbing a lot of blue and putting it in my first palette. So the only way that a dry brush is gonna move a dry pigment, pigment is through water, hence watercolor. So let's keep picking up some blue, and I have my other palette because I just ran out of this blue today, so I'm gonna reach over and grab a little bit more blue. All right, so that looks like a navy, but true navy um, actually has a little violet and black in it. So I'm gonna grab some violet, and again, this is the 14 color compact. The 12 also has a violet that you can use. So it looks a little more purple, and I'm gonna grab a little black and create a really nice navy. I know it looks a little thin now, um, but we're gonna get more blue in there. I think I have a little, I got a little rosemary in that. Like the herb actually was actually in my watercolor tray, so <sighs> gotta get rid of that. Okay, so I'm picking up a nice navy. Now, don't be scared. I want you, if you're brand new to watercolor, to put one mark on the paper. All right, that's it guys. Thanks so much for watching. Just kidding, don't go away. <laughs> so you did it. You did your first mark on paper, okay? Let's create a pattern. I want you to create three more of those marks, just like that. Take your paintbrush and just do three more marks. As you can see, moving from the left to the right, it's starting to get a little dry. So if your pigment is starting to get dry and you don't like how there's a little bit of hole in the mark that you're making, add more water, pick up more pigment, and it's almost like brand new, like the first one. What's gonna happen is the more water you add and the less pigment you have, it's gonna start to go transparent. So let's rewind. How I'm picking up pigment is wetting my brush, picking 
and putting pigment into my palette. When I'm moving and creating a pattern or a rhythm, if I wanna keep the same amount of paint or the same saturation, I have to keep adding pigment. Keep collecting and picking up pigment. Otherwise, watch how dark this next brush stroke is next to this light one. A lot darker. So with more water, so I'm gonna add a lot of water now and less pigment. I'm adding, I'm flooding this with water. I'm really just sopping up mostly water now. Look how much lighter my brush strokes are. So this is helpful when you're starting to paint more detailed imagery like sky, if you're going from dark to light. Now I did just add a lot more water, so I'm gonna try to recreate some of that, some of that navy for you. I love navy, I love navy and emerald. Those are like such great colors for me right now and I think for the, for the world, those are really fun colors. So I'm adding a lot more pigment. I know this seems so simple, but really this is 101. So if you are like, so new to watercolor, I want you to get comfortable creating a rhythm. And I'm gonna add more navy, so this is super light. If you were gonna go, now let's try something called a gradation or saturation. So I want you to take your brush, pick up your pigment, and move it onto the paper. Keep that live, keep that edge live, or don't, basically just don't do anything with it. Dip your water, get all the pigment off, bring water onto the paper and touch the edge of the pigment you just created. Do you see how the watercolor is now moving itself into the water? This is a medium that loves to function with water. And that was the one thing, someone asked me a question the other day. They said, um, basically, you know, how did you get into watercolors? What do you love so much about watercolors? I said, I love letting go. So I'm daring you to keep adding water and pull that and watch this pigment move down the water. Bring some blue in and add more blue back at the top. And you'll see that the pigment will still find its way to the water. Simple, simple steps. Let's do something a little more interesting. So maybe this is your first time and for the first time ever you finally put pigment on paper and you're like, oh my God, this is so cool, I'm doing watercolor. It's so cool and you are doing watercolor. Let's make something a little more rhythmic. So come back to a color of your choice. Maybe you don't have access to navy and you're just gonna stick to blue, but I want you to make a lot of the color that you are obsessed with right now. So I'm gonna go back to make some navy, make a lot. So you want it to kind of start to look almost, not syrupy, but um, a little bit thicker, a little bit more concentrated than water. So really get, uh, get comfortable with that pigment. It looks, what's a good word for this, Michael? It looks just, it's a little thicker, it's a little thicker. It's like maple syrup, it's like watered down maple syrup. We're getting a little thicker, almost like, so this is a really dark color right now. I shouldn't put Michael on the spot like that. Don't worry, babe, it's fine, I'll figure it out. It'll come to me, it'll come to me. Or if y'all wanna tell me what this looks like, you can comment. So, so there's an image on my iPad that um, I really like, and it's just a bunch of small circles. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start to, thank you, Michael, I'm gonna dip my paintbrush in the water, pick up pigment, Hold your fingers a little further back. I'm all about holding it back because if you start to get like this with your watercolor, you're not gonna be able to loosen up your arm and loosen up your strokes. So move your fingers back and I want you to create loops. I want you to create loops. So if you can see this image right here, we're gonna create that together. Don't be scared, just do two rows at first. Try not to take your brush off the paper. It's like you're making cursive L's. Don't take your brush off the paper. There you go, it's okay if the brush gets dry. Maybe for the first time ever you created a rhythm. Go ahead. And there's an art of getting the paint out of the brush, it's called pouncing and I'm gonna show you. If imagine this is the bowl of water, you're actually pouncing the brush. That doesn't ruin the brush. What ruins your watercolor brushes, is letting them sit in your water jug. There's a glue in the watercolor brush that holds the bristles in, and that can start to become eroded over time. So try not to ever let, there's some really cool, and my friend Michelle Collins, she has a cool thing where you can put it over your tub and it holds your watercolor brushes. That's why I have my watercolor brushes like this. I never let them sit in the tub, so don't get used to that. All right, sop up more pigment, get a little bit more water, 
and I want you to do another line. But when you start to see it get a little light, don't be afraid, add more pigment and connect to the line you just created. We're just doing little else. Does anybody have any questions so far? I know I'm kind of moving a little fast, but does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, and Michael will tell me if y'all do. Um, and maybe this is just nice for you to watch, but you're just creating patterns. I know this is so simple, but it's a good way for you to just be okay with doing it finally. I know some of you all DM'd me and you're like, I have watercolor supplies. I just don't know even where to begin. So I'm hoping that this is kind of answering that. And at least one of the scariest things for me when I was doing watercolor was starting somewhere. I, I think I just, I took a class when I first moved to Houston and I'd always wanted to do it, but I was scared of starting somewhere. And really starting is just trying it out. And I've learned the most, not only by taking classes, but really just starting. So I'm gonna hold the camera up a little bit and you can probably already see that that navy is really drifting. So it's still wet. If you can see some of that shine, this paper holds a lot of water. All right, we're gonna try another technique and I want you, so I'm gonna move this aside and I'm gonna split my paper into four quadrants because I want to maximize the space that I'm showing y'all tonight. All right, Michael, can I have my iPad bed? Uh, iPad bed, iPad babe, sorry, <laughs> not iPad bed. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry and we're gonna come back and I want you now to take your brush and I love this picture, it's just a picture of loops but um, it's a fun way to kind of free up your hand. Create that color, so sop up your pigment, get your brush wet, and move your color to the palette. Don't be afraid to move your color. And remember, don't also be afraid. I used to, when I was a little girl, I used to be so afraid of running out of art supplies and I would barely use any paint. Don't worry about it. You can refill these little, refill these little, there's always gonna be these little things left, so you can always refill them. I'm getting navy again. And I want you to create three rows of three circles and I want them to be big. So hold your brush at the middle of your brush, like you're holding a pencil, and create three circles. So look, I am just really pressing down nicely on that brush. I can tell that I need a little bit more water. I don't want any of that white to be showing in the O. Add a little bit more water. Let them touch. When you let the brush touch, yes, the two colors are going to bleed into one another. If you can remember from that exercise where we kept adding water, the color is gonna find its way to the water. Hey JP, I know buddy. Oops, so I messed up there, that's okay. If ever you mess up, take your paper towel and just sop it up, just press down. If it won't come out, take another brush, get it wet, and you can erase. You have time with cold press. There you go, and we're just sopping it up. I'm gonna add another circle. Go ahead and do two more circles. Just And if you want them to touch or overlap, I mean, get creative. To get thick, you have to press down a little bit more on your own brush. Just like that. Don't be afraid, you're just creating circles. They don't have to be beautiful, they don't have to be perfect. It's just a way for you to try this whole watercolor thing. I'm gonna make three small ones and I add a little green. Okay, maybe I'll do four. There. So we're talking about pigment, how to put it on wet, how to put it on dry paper. Let me show you something cool. Take a bigger brush if you have it. And yes, you do want to change your water frequently, but tonight I, uh, I'm not going to change my water. So if it starts to get, because I don't want to keep getting up. So if it starts to get muddy, I apologize for that. Um, if like on the paper. I want you to take your big brush, the biggest brush that you have in your collection, even if you have two brushes, I want you to take the biggest one. And in a little square in your paper or in a corner of your paper, go ahead and dump water on that corner. So you're just rubbing and wetting the whole area. You're wetting the area. So go ahead and wet the area. And you can always tell the border of where the water is just by kind of moving your head around and you can see where it's glossy still. So I'm wetting the whole paper. I'm wetting it, the whole paper, the whole little, I mean, not the whole paper, excuse me, just the corner of it. All right, so once that wet, once that is wet, I'm gonna change up my color. So I'm gonna go into more of just a violet or magenta. 
because that's kind of a fun color. It's not kind of, it's a really fun color. All right, so grab a different color. If you're looking for something more interesting, try a warm color because it's like the exact opposite. But just keep in mind, let's say I were to add this warm color into this blue, well, it's a little more pink, but it's gonna start to change, it's gonna start to darken, and it'll move its way into more of a brown because I'm, if I'm going with the color wheel, blues and reds coming together can make a purple, but if it's closer to orange, it'll start to make a brown. You always wanna refer back to your color wheel. So I've wet the whole paper. We still have time for this to be wet. And I want you just to take the tip of your brush and put one dot and watch it start to spread. So if you know my art, in order for me to get that moving water, I wet the image and I pour paint onto it. And it's keep spreading. The more water you add, the more it will spread. So I'm gonna really wet the space around it. I'm gonna add way more water. I mean, this is like way more water. Now I'm gonna take a lot more water on my brush and dip it in. So I'm just pouring water in. Take your brush, get it wet, and brush it up right to the edge of the watercolor and start to move some more of that water. And you can really manipulate where the water goes. If you've realized it's too much water, take a drier brush and press it into one edge and just eliminate some of that water. You can always pick up water. You can always add more water. That's why I like cold press because it's a little bit more forgiving. You have a little bit more time. Let's say I wanted to make one side of this dark pink and the other side of this light pink. I'm gonna put a lot of pink up here. I'm gonna wet my brush and I'm gonna just keep adding water. Keep adding a watered down pigment. And over time you can create a nice shade. So if you're doing a sky, if you're doing an ocean, if you're doing anything where it goes from dark to light, keep adding more water onto your otherwise wet edge. Let's try another technique. And I want you to have a little bit more control. And then we're gonna do something fun together. So we learned how to hold the brush properly. We've learned our basic colors. Color wheel, thanks babe. Uh, we've learned our basic colors. Sorry, Michael is messing with my iPad. I think he's just trying to be helpful. Um, we've learned our basic colors, right? So we have red, blue, yellow. And we realize if we mix those three colors, we can get orange, green, purple. So I, I want you to experiment at home with mixing the primary colors into the secondary colors. And that's, that's what your own pace is. It's really fun. I mean, you can make your own level of yellow, your, I mean, your own level of orange, your own level of green, depending on how much of the primary colors you're adding. We've talked about different types of paper. We've talked about basic supplies. Your basic setup is so simple, which is why I love watercolor. You need a flat surface, you need paper, water jug, your pigments, and your brush, and it is that simple. We've talked about really saturated colors and really light colors. Coming back to this little exercise. I want you to take a cute little postcard size of paper, and I want you to make a pattern that makes you happy, that you might wanna keep, or you might wanna to give to a friend. Just a really abstract pattern. I know that's kind of trending now, these very pretty, bold, abstract shapes. So I'm gonna eventually cut this and give this to somebody. But go ahead and I want you to make a cute pattern and you can follow along with me if you don't really know where to begin. And I'm gonna add more of an emerald to my, to my base right now. So I'm gonna go back and add some blue and some green, a really dark, lovely navy blue with a really beautiful green. And I want you to take your, so I'm, I'm pouncing my brush and I'm not letting it stay. I want you to take, if you have your smaller brush, your number 10, if you have a, don't worry if you don't, whatever you have is fine, but if you do have access to a smaller brush, take your smaller brush. And I want you to kind of piece some of these 101 things together. After this, after you feel like you've had a good rhythm, we're gonna do one fun activity and we're gonna create actually an art piece together. So I know, stay with me. We have one more kind of loosening up your hand and guiding your hand. All right, so get your pretty color and I want you to take, let's say this is a five by seven. I want you to move your hand along in a pattern of your choice. So I'm gonna go like this. 
top row is going to have these cute little hatch marks. Add more pigment. And I'm just gonna add a cute little, and you can make this a little card that you write to a friend. I can already tell my pigment is getting dry. I'm gonna add more water, add more pigment. It helps to make a lot of pigment. And I'm gonna keep adding more hatch marks. Look, it's okay if it's not perfect. And I'm just gonna kinda go at a cute rhythm. Just like that. We're just doodling, we're just learning how to paint. Super simple, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna have a little bit more advanced tutorials on more specific things, but if you are like, what is watercolor? You're doing it, and you're making something fun, and it certainly doesn't have to be perfect. We're almost done, or whatever you're doing, just take about, you know, 30 more seconds with it. Super simple, I'm gonna have to add more water to this. All right, and I am going to send that to someone special. And I don't know who that is yet, but they're gonna get this card from me. And on the back, I'm gonna write something, and it's a little watercolor, and I'll probably sign it right there. Last activity before we do our little fun thing is I wanna challenge you, if you have a pencil nearby, to watercolor in a shape. So go ahead and draw one big square. And on the bottom, you're gonna write W2D, wet to dry. That's what we're gonna do in here. Draw another square, and you're gonna write W2W, wet to wet. We're gonna do one more square, and we're gonna write G, and that means gradation. And we're gonna go from dark to light. Take a bigger or medium-sized brush, come back to your color, and I, all I want you to do is fill in the square you think these things are simple, but this is actually scary now because now we're sticking into a shape. And I want you to fill in the square with color and try to make it pretty even. Remember, if your edges are still live or if they're still wet, try not to lose your edges, or try not to, I definitely just switched my left hand, side note, some of uh, y'all might not know this, but sometimes I do paint with my left hand. I don't think I've ever told anybody that. <laughs> um, there you go. It's a nice way for me like, to not get so stuck up in my right hand. All right, so try to fill in the shape. Congratulations, you officially just drew and colored it in with watercolor. So now with these activities, if I ever say, JP, if I ever say color it in with your colors at home, you can say you've done that. Let's now take our wet brush and we're gonna wet the whole square that says W to W. So I'm just, I'm getting the whole square wet. And all I'm gonna have you do is a pretty interesting technique. It's really fun, we've already kind of done it. Is pick up your pigment again. <laughs> Y'all can probably hear JP. Pick up your pigment again. I'm gonna make that kind of emerald blue. And all I want you to do is go on the outside of the square as if you're drawing it again with watercolor and watch the colors bleed into the middle. Here we go. I'm gonna hold my brush a little bit differently. And I'm gonna start adding a little bit more pigment into my corners. And over time, this square, these blues are gonna keep seeping into the middle. I think I missed it, I did miss a corner. So if you miss a corner, don't worry, just keep adding in blue. If you wanna get crazy and add a blue in the middle and see what happens. So now you can see how if, let's say you were doing clouds, and if you wanted to keep the space for a cloud, you could go around a certain shape and then re-wet the area and add in that pigment and you can create a nice cloud. That is really extreme. I know that that seems intense. Um, we're gonna talk about that later. This is your gradation. So again, we're gonna go with a wet brush, pick up your pigment. Oh, and I meant to put comma W2D, wet to dry. And because this is cold press, we certainly have time, there's no stress. Add a line of color at your square. Keep your edge live. Wet your brush, take off the pigment by pouncing your brush at the bottom. 
Touch the edge with your brush. Notice how beautiful that is. Now get a really wet brush and carry it to the edge. You want more pigment, just like you did in this square, add it in the corners and over time it'll seep. If it's not seeping fast enough, you can always ma manipulate your paper and lift it up and it'll help to drip the pigment down. Now if you ever feel like you make a mistake and you have to pull something here, just know that it's gonna ruin your line if you're making a sky because now you're taking out water and pigment. So do your best to just keep adding water and pigment. Only take away if it's like a huge mistake. So, you can see that okay? A little closer? So now you can see this one's really dripping. This was just a fun exercise, but if you can draw shapes, you can really do anything. This is fully dry now. A little bit of this is still wet. We're gonna do a fun activity now, as if that wasn't fun. I'm gonna use my hot press and actually give away this pretty painting um, to, it'll be a cute giveaway that I do, but I want you to get a fresh piece of paper if you have it, and we're gonna make a succulent green, or excuse me, a cactus green. We're gonna make a magenta or a pink. You can also do red if your palette is limited. So we're gonna do green, red, I want yellow and orange. Let's talk about it. So I already have a red here. If you have the uh, compact set, you're lucky because you pretty much have all those colors for you. Red is just red. Pull your red. Make a fun red. It can be more orange red too. There's my red. I'm happy with it. I'm cool. I'm not going to get worried about it. Let's make a green. So again, oh shoot. <laughs> Emergency. Got to get my paper towel. That's okay. It kind of dabbed up. Michael is getting me more. That's not a paper towel, but that's okay. That'll work. <laughs> Dinner napkins, thanks babe. That'll work, any napkin. All right, so I'm making an orange. I'm making a green. And I'm gonna mix it in that blue because I kinda like that blue. And I'm gonna add a little brown. So if you wanna make an army green or a pretty cactus green, add brown into your green. If you don't know how to make brown, put a little orange in the green, or a little red in the green that you have already, and then I'll make some brown. I like that green a lot. This is a pretty cactus green. Maybe I'm adding a little bit of yellow in it. Yeah, just a little bit. I like that green. All right, not worried about it. There we go, thank you Michael, brought me actual paper towels, love you. And then the last one I want you to make is an orange. So we're gonna take a little red and a little yellow. JP doesn't like this orange. It's okay, I'm gonna make it again. Orange and yellow. I'm sorry, <laughs> red and yellow. <laughs> Make orange. All right. So, you have learned tonight repetitive patterns, adding in color if it starts to get too light, adding in color to fill a space, moving from wet to dry, which is what we're about to do, moving from wet to wet, and then moving paint down. Let's start to see what happens. I want you to take your bigger brush and I want you to pick up your green and pick up a lot of it with a lot of water. In the middle of your fine piece of paper, I want you to do one big line. I'm actually, hold on, don't be scared. I'm actually gonna change my brush. But if you've already done it, I'm proud of you. Keep that line. Sorry to freak y'all out. All right, one big line in the middle of your paper. Keep a flat edge at the bottom. Take a little bit of yellow and just kind of put it into certain spots. Maybe go like that. I want you to take more of your green, do one line and then hook it like a backwards J. I want you to take your green, maybe you add a little bit more brown, a little bit more yellow, one big line, hook it like a J. Maybe you add this a little bit taller, and you have just made a cactus. Let's make some other fun ones at the bottom. And so when I say pour in a little yellow, if you like the look of watercolor, if you just dab in a little yellow, you'll be able to keep those edges and you can tell it's hand painted. I'm just going to add in some fun yellow. Honestly, this is like so free and so relaxed. 
Take your pink and your small, or your red and your smaller brush, and I want you to do three little dots. One, well, do you see? I made a mistake, but I'm kind of okay with it. Two, three. Try to not let them touch the green unless you're okay with it. Two, three. One, two, three. Cute. And then I want you to add two more cute ones. Make them a little bit more yellow, though, if you have a little bit more yellow green. One long line. Just being fun with colors. It's okay, JP. Another line, a J. Another line. Cute. I'm gonna make this one a little more brown. Why? No, I don't know, I want it to be alive. Do you see, this is also free. I can, we can really do whatever. Let's do one more. One long line. I'm just gonna do one. Okay, I feel weird, I'm doing one more down there. All right, take that pretty red or that pink that you just made. One, two, three, one, two, three. Oops. I got a little bit in the cactus, but that's okay. And if you're like huge oops and you absolutely hate that that got in, remember, take your brush and press into that green and you can pull up that red and then you can add more green. All right, last thing, if you have a pen, maybe you create a little party string, take your pen, I'm using the Micron, remember that was on my recommendations or favorite supplies, and do a big smile at the top. Just like that. And then you can go in and add a few triangles like party flags. I'm gonna do maybe, I don't know, a couple. Just a cute little, I have a backyard patio and this is like something I always envision happening in my backyard one day. A party string and more succulents. I already have a lot, or more cacti, excuse me. All right, take your red and now we're learning how to fill in a shape that we have created. Very carefully we're moving wet to dry and we're coloring in. I'm going to do red, yellow, red, yellow, so I'm going to skip. So now I'm holding my brush a little bit closer to the top. Oh no, don't want to do that. I want to do that here. JP doesn't like that. <laughs> Pounce your brush, get out that red, and go into your yellow or your orange that you made. I'm gonna get rid of that yellow because I and make sure when you're switching from color to color, you really get the lasting color out of whatever you just mixed because. For instance, I just had a lot of green in that yellow and it will make it brown. So this is more of an orange yellow, but I'm actually okay with that. And we're gonna add in our yellow. So you're just creating fun rhythms, fun patterns, super simple watercolor design, but a really cute thing for you to do if you're drawing your corn scene. Okay, so look, I already got a little bit of paint right there, I'm taking a dry brush and I'm just moving and pulling up that paint. So you have to be kind of fast. I think that's why people are scared of watercolor because you do have to be fast. There you go. And that, folks, is your, and I'm signing my name, if you knew me, I sign all my work, 20, is your cute corn scene. Feel free to add more flowers or anything. So I'm gonna pan the camera over here and can you see me okay <laughs> okay so um okay have it now can you see me okay okay you guys i know that that was a little bit longer but as you can tell that was only the 101 so we have a lot more things to uncover and try out but i'm hoping what my goal for this tonight was for you to actually do it i know a lot of y'all have watercolor materials at home um some of y'all bought them before the quarantine during the stay home order uh, which I think is awesome. Remember, um, with this Haley From Home tutorial series, um, I'll save all these videos to IGTV, and if you want supplies and you don't know where to get them, go to HaleyBowen.com under events, and I have my list of recommendations and where to get them, and some links for like immediate purchase um, from the locations in Houston. Um, last thing too, I'm gonna do a fun giveaway and give away some of these pieces from the tutorials, and um, does anybody have any questions? 
Watercolor is incredibly loose, which makes it scary. I know, watercolor is incredibly loose, which makes it scary. And tonight we haven't even covered a, per a percentage of it. And I'm so glad you shared that. And um, I think it's, so oh, I definitely messed up the flags. No one told me, that's okay. I'm not gonna freak out about it. Um, watercolor is loose, but watercolor, when you find rhythm, when you find pattern, when you find a level of comfortability that works for you with practice, you'll be able to control the water which is kind of the hardest part about watercolor. So watercolor 101, all we're doing right now is patterns, rhythm, and doing it, doing it for the first time. Does anybody have any questions at all? Any other questions? And remember, maybe for you, you're just making a really cute card to give to somebody with um, a shape or maybe a cactus or you know something cute like that. But does anybody have any other questions? Okay, awesome. So um, sip and paint, please. <laughs> I had a glass of rosé and a half uh, before this, so Michael said that we would have Malbec tonight. Um, so, and a sip and paint, do a sip and paint. Thank you, Kashel, that is a great idea. So stay tuned, lots of fun activities coming up for y'all. Um, definitely worthwhile to have some of these supplies at home, and I, can, I would love to help you with that. So, Haley from home, um, if you paint something and you wanna tag me, or um, I, I'd love to repost and share, Jackson, the best part of my day was, um, I, I, I was with my, oh, what? Oh, painting. Oh, I was like, I was with my husband. I was, it was rainy. Um, was painting. This was, this is always the best part of my day. Um, and I feel like I'm really giving back. So I'm hoping to, from not touching the paper with my wrist. Oh my God. Stand by. Y'all. I don't know if you can see my butt. This is called a mall stick. Okay, it's not M-A-L shopping, it's M-A-H-L. Great question, Ariana. You can make these at home, but you can buy them too. It's just a piece of cloth over some foam with string, and this is bamboo, and Michael, showcase real quick over here, babe, the paper. If you put the mall stick down, this is what like all the masters used, a variation of a mall stick. You can hold on to the mall stick with your hand and draw. So you can get as much finesse and control as you want because you're creating the force as compared to like some people who are like pinky down, elbow down, you know, trying not to hold the paper. Get a mall stick or make one. That's a really great question. Any other questions? Probably don't remember one from me. Oh, hi, oh my gosh, yes. Hi, Haley and Gavin. Oh, it's so good to see y'all. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so I love you guys. You're amazing, Haley Coates. I love y'all. I know that that was so much in like 40 minutes, but um, stay tuned for more hands-on activities. And um, I, I'm just really happy that y'all are here. So thank you so much. Have an amazing Saturday. I'll see you guys soon.